believing the challenging days and you better discover the power for this hour for you to be able to live a victorious life and for you to be able to swim against the tide of the waves of the ocean that is coming upon the people of the world that's why the lord has brought us together at this time so that we look at the year that has come by and we look at the present moment and we look at the year that is coming and then we're saying by the grace of god in the strength of the lord the power for this moment the power for this hour and the power in the deepest of situations in the highest of the challenges the power we're going to receive and we're going to face the future with courage and boldness in jesus name in second timothy first timothy rather in first timothy chapter 4 looking at verse 1 and verse 2 telling us why the times in which we are living why they are dangerous times why they are perilous times why these are times of confusion times when people do not know what to do and then the lord says to be forewarned is to be forearmed since you know that this is the hour we are living when the evil spirits and the demonic spirits and satan himself the prince of the power of the air when they are doing their very worst to make the people on earth confused and discouraged and to make them perplexed when well, you know that this is the hour in which we are living then you'll be able to fortify yourself protect yourself and receive the power that will carry you through this power you're going to receive at this retreat will carry you through in jesus name first Timothy chapter 4 verses 1 and 2 now the spirit speaketh expressly that in the latter time some shall depart from the faith Thank God it doesn't say all oh, shall depart from the faith because I will never depart from the faith. I said I will not depart from the faith. Some will. I'm, I'm not going to be among them. Not many, but some. Not all, but some. There will still be people that will remain in the faith. And I'm making up my mind I'll be one of those people that will remain in the faith. Come with me. Whatever Satan will do, whatever demons will do, whatever unbelievers and backsliders will do, you will remain in the faith in Jesus' name. But the Spirit is speaking expressly, very clearly, that in the latter time, some shall depart from the faith, giving heed to seducing spirits and doctrines of devils, that's what brings the perplexity that's what brings the problem that's what makes people confused satan says something today the following day says another thing evil spirits say something today the following week they say another thing and you're confused and they go all over the world like that bringing confusion and perplexity it even says in verse 2 speaking lies in hypocrisy having their conscience seared with a hot iron the appears that the people of the world they're so hard it and it's that they've lost their conscience having their conscience seared had it with a hot iron but the lord is saying we will not bow we will not bend we will not backslide we're going to remain faithful to the very end in Jesus' name. See what the people before us, see what they faced. And yet, in the midst of it all, we're able to have the power and the courage and the boldness to remain firm to the very end. And if God gave them the power, He'll give us the power. If he gave them the boldness to remain faithful and true, he will give us the boldness to remain faithful and true in Jesus' name. Second Corinthians chapter 4. Second Corinthians chapter 4, verse 8. We're troubled on every side, yet not distressed. 
We are perplexed, but not in despair. What a confession. What a testimony. Paul the Apostle said, We have gone through it all. The fire and the flood. We have gone through it all. The deep and in the valley. We have gone through it all. The confusion and the conflict. We have gone through it all. The trials and the trouble. And he says, We are troubled on every side. Yet, we are not distressed. We are perplexed. We don't understand everything taking place in the world, and yet we're not in despair. Persecuted, but not forsaken. Cast down, but not destroyed. Always bearing about in the body the dying of the Lord Jesus, that the life also of Jesus might be made manifest in a mortal body. It says, he's watched Jesus Christ, looking unto Jesus, the author and the finisher of our faith. Jesus went through it all, and yet he remained victorious. And he said, we're suffering, we're being persecuted, we're going through the same thing that Jesus went through, so the life of Christ, the victorious overcoming life of Christ, was made manifest in us. It says in verse 11, For we which live are always delivered unto death for Jesus' sake. Always delivered unto death. That's what the persecutors want. They want to destroy the believers. But then it says that the life also of Jesus might be made manifest in a mortal flesh. So then, death walketh in us. But life in you, how? Because of the faith we have. The faith we have will keep us above the waves, above the waters, above the trials, above the trouble. And you're going to find at the end of the message, we'll begin to pray that the power of God will come upon your life. If you have been shaking and you've been trembling and you've been wondering where I stand, I'm telling you today, today, you're going to stand in Jesus' name. Because you resist the devil with faith, with courage, with boldness, and that evil one trying to make you backslide, he'll turn away from you in Jesus' name. Verse 13, we having the same spirit of faith, not spirit of fear, spirit of timidity, spirit of backsliding, spirit of Cowardice, we having the same spirit of faith according as it is written, I believed and therefore advise spoken. You speak what you believe. If you believe that you are more than a conqueror, you speak it out. If you believe that the devil will not overrun your life, you speak it out. If you believe you are receiving the power for the present hour, you are speaking out. It says, We, according to the spirit of faith, will say what we believe. We also believe and therefore speak, knowing that he which raised up Jesus shall raise up us also by Jesus and shall present us with you. For all things are for your sakes. That the abundant grace might throw the thanksgiving of many down to the glory of God. You will live to the glory of God. I will live to the glory of God. And this church as a whole will keep on living to the glory of God in Jesus' name. You know, it's when we live according to the word. When we live according to all that Christ is revealing to us, that is glory. His power, His strength will be made manifest in us. And the reason why the Lord brought us here is so that that glory, the manifestation of His glory from on high, will come upon our lives. And that glory will be, will be in your life, revealed in your life, even from tonight in Jesus' name. Everybody say glory. Not disgrace, not falling. Not the devil rubbing your face on the ground in the mud, but glory, beauty, majesty, the power of the Lord coming upon your life. And it says, when the life of Christ 
is manifested in all sensuous and through mortal flesh. Then it says, There be glory in our lives. In verse 16, for we for which cause we faint not, because our expectation is glory. Our expectation is majesty. Our expectation is living according to the purpose and the plan of the Lord. It says, because of that, we think not. But though our outward man perish, yet the inward man is renewed day by day. That renewal will come in Jesus' name. Renewal in your spirit. Renewal in your mind. Renewal in your strength. Renewal in your ability. Ability to face whatever. The devil may throw at you in these perplexing, perilous times. That the Lord will strengthen you day by day. Day in Jesus' name. In verse 17, for our light affliction. Is this all the things we'll ever go through? Or the light affliction. All the challenges we'll ever go through. Or the light affliction. All the temptations and trials. You'll ever go through. Or the light affliction. For a light affliction. Which is but for a moment. Work it for us. A far more exceeding and eternal weight of give me the word again glory looks like we're in for glory during this retreat you are in for glory during this retreat the power for your hour that brings the glory and the strength of the Lord upon your life and it says whatever the light affliction in the midst of it all there be glory upon our lives while we look not at the things which are seen, but at the things which are not seen. For the things which are seen are temporal, they are passing away. And then it says, But the things which are not seen are eternal. And those eternal blessings will be ours in Jesus' name. We're looking at 2 Corinthians chapter 12, verse 9. 2 Corinthians chapter 12, verse 9. And he said unto me, My grace is sufficient for thee. The grace of the Lord will be sufficient for you. What are you going through? Dry those tears and take away that depression. And understand that as we come here for this retreat, the power of the Lord will be sufficient for you. The grace of the Lord will be sufficient for you. The mercy of the Lord will be sufficient for you. And then every prayer we pray here, the power will come down. Abundant grace will come down. And there will be the sufficiency in every one of our lives in Jesus' name. That's the reason why you have a duty, you have a role to play, you have a responsibility. What are you to do? Because the power is available. The strength is available. The courage is available. The boldness is available. And everything you need for this present hour, everything you need for this present situation, everything provided by Christ from Calvary. And I, you have a part to play, to go to pray, to go to the Lord in prayer and say, Lord, here is my need, the mercy I need, the strength I need. The power I need, the courage I need, the boldness I need. And then the Lord will give it unto us. In Ephesians chapter 6, Ephesians chapter 6, verse 10. Finally, my brethren, be strong in the Lord. You'll be strong in the Lord. There's no way you can be strong outside the Lord. Without me, you can do nothing. It's when you come into the Lord more and more. You pray that, Lord, I want to abide in you. You abide in me and your word abide in me. When you come more and more into the Lord, then you become more and more strong. Finally, my brethren, be strong in the Lord and in the power of his might. Put on, not to put this one on. 
It's not just hearing the preaching and not praying. It's not just coming to a tree and not doing something. Put it on. The power is available. Put it on. The strength is available. Put it on. And all everything you need for the present moment and the present hour available. Put it on. Put on the whole armor of God that you may be able to stretch against the wiles of the devil. For we wrestle not against flesh and blood, but against principalities and against powers, and against the rulers of the darkness of this world, against spiritual wickedness in high places. This is why some people give up. The principalities and powers are too strong for them. The rulers of this age, they are too strong for them. And the spiritual wickedness, wicked spirits, in high places, they are too strong for them. But when we put on the power of God, nothing will be too strong for you to confront. Wherefore, take unto you the whole armor of God, that she may be able to withstand in what kind of day? In the evil day, this evil day, this perilous time. We are going to stand. Having done all to stand, stand therefore. Having your loins girt about with truth. And having on the best plate of righteousness. And your feet shod with the preparation of the gospel of peace. Above all, we need this above all, beyond all. Above all, taking the shield of faith. Where we ye shall be able to quench how many darts? How many darts? All the furry darts of the wicked and taking the hell and take the helmet of salvation and the sword of the spirit, which is the word of God. Pray, 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 pray. Always, you know, there are people that have turned the retreat to a social affair, and they come in here. Just how are you? How are you? The retreat time is praying time. If you're going to have the power, if you're going to overcome, if you're going to be more than a conqueror, if what you expect after the retreat is going to be greater and higher than what you were before the retreat time. It's praying time during the retreat. Praying always. It's not a playing time. It's socializing time. Eating time. Just fellowship time. Praying. Because that's how sinners get saved. Seek the Lord. That's how believers get sanctified. Seek the Lord. That house, that is how sanctified people get baptized in the Holy Ghost. Seek the Lord. That's why those who are cowards in evangelism. That's how you become strengthened to evangelize. Seek the Lord. Praying always with all prayer and supplication in the spirit. And watching thereon too with all perseverance and supplication for all saints. We're going to do it. I said we're going to do it. We're going to pray according to the promises of the Lord that leads me to point number two the manifold promises for the painful hour. Manifold promises for the painful hour in Joshua chapter one. Joshua chapter 1, reading from verse 5. Joshua was going to face some real challenging times. The people of Canaan did not want them to come into Canaan. And those Jericho walls were very high and very deep and very thick. And yet the Lord was giving them a great promise. They were going to go in and possess. Like we are going to go into the new year, we are going to possess. And if that is the case, we need to look at the promises of God and then pray in line according to those promises of the Lord. Joshua chapter 1, manifold promises for the painful hour. 
for the perilous hour. In Joshua chapter 1 verse 5, There shall not any man be able to stand before thee all the days of thy life. I thought you would give me a good, good amen. You know why people that slide, people you face them are stronger than them. You know why people turn their back on the Lord? Because the challenges they face, the river they're supposed to swim through is too deep for them. And the Lord is saying, you will not backslide. I said the Lord is saying, you will not backslide. Because there shall not any man any man and that's why some people in the village don't want to come to church they are afraid of some men some men of evil power of faculty power but the promise we have for you this end of the year and coming to the new year is that no herbalist will be able to stand before you no occultic man will be able to stand before you and you know why some people are so much afraid they cannot serve the lord they cannot follow through on sound doctrine because there's some persecutors there's some people that search in them if you go to that church if you believe that bible if you take the totality of the word of god and you live like that if you stand for what you to stand for we're going to do this and this and because they cannot stand before the enemy that's all the chicken out cowards but thank god tonight there shall no man no man i said no man there shall no man be able to stand before you all the days of your life as your days so will your strength be then it says as i was with moses so will i be with you before the magicians the lord was with moses before Pharaoh, the lord was with moses before the chariots of egypt when they were by the red sea the lord was with moses before the amalekites that came against them the lord was with moses and before Balaam, Balak, the false prophet, the Lord was with Moses, and the Lord was telling Joshua, you have nothing to fear, because as I was with Moses, even so will I be with you. I will not fail thee, nor forsake thee. Be strong and of a good courage, for unto this people shall not divide for an inheritance the land which i swear unto their fathers to give them only be thou strong and very courageous i will be strong i said i will be strong you know what as i read this i realize the lord will say you have the ability and the skill the capacity to be strong that's why i give the command the lord never commands anything you cannot do if the lord knew you could not be strong he'll not tell you to be strong if the lord knew you could not be courageous he'll not tell you to be courageous he knew you have the ability within you the skill within you and you have the mind within you he knows that he's giving you enough grace enough support enough sustenance that's why he says with what you have and with who you have and with the faith you have and the promises have given you be strong and be very courageous that thou mayest observe to do according to all the law which Mo 